Okay, now let's take a look at parts K and L, which appear you know, here near the bottom of the screen. Okay, K says, using the equation R sub S equals D sub 1 divided by P0 plus G, find an approximate required rate of return for the stock for Kennedy in Strasburg. Then use these values in the constant growth stock price model to find a price for Edelman's stock. And they let us know that to, to use growth, they've gone ahead and averaged the earnings per share and dividend per share growth that was previously calculated for Edelman. So let's slide over and look and see how we would tackle K here. Again, I've done this ahead of time just so this doesn't take forever. Uh, that's part L. Let me slide up here. Let's see if I can get K on the screen. Uh, let's keep going. We can show all of this here. Uh, I think that's it. Yep, yeah, that's that'll do it. So now so we have the data from the previous part, and we look at uh, K. Okay, with K, what they've asked us to do is calculate this formula right here, okay, to come up with the expected or estimated required rate of return for Edelman um, based on what we know about Kennedy and Strasburg. Okay, so now what I've done to make the calculation easy, I broke the pieces that we need, the D1, the P0, and the G. Okay, so D1 for Kennedy it, we take the dividend of 225 times 1 plus the growth rate. And the growth rate is given in cell N43. Okay, if we slide up, I can show you where, N, what, where that value came from. Okay, now I've slid back up to show you that on Part B, we calculated the compound annual growth rate is 6.4 for dividends per share for Strasburg. So we'll be doing the same thing with Kennedy using the 8.4. All right, so if we look at the Kennedy D1, we've now explained how we take the dividend currently and multiply it times 1 times the compound annual growth rate to come up with D1 for Kennedy. We use the same technique for Strasburg. And N44 was D0, the dividend that we calculated for 2007. Okay, P0 is the current price, $36.65. And then the growth rate we've already calculated for dividends, 8.4 and 6.4 from N43 and N44, which is exactly what we used in these formulas to calculate D1. Okay, once we have that, then we simply can calculate the R hat or the estimated required rate of return by taking the value in L83, the 244, dividing it by, now keep in mind that's D1, our numerator, dividing it by P0, the current stock price, and adding growth to it. Based on that, we come up with an estimated required rate of return based on Kennedy of 15.23%, and for Strasburg, 12.54%. Okay, once we have that estimated required rate of return for those companies, then we can use the constant growth model given right there and basing it on Kennedy, come up with a price range for Edelberg. Or um, now I'm even getting the company name wrong Edelson. We'll try one more time. Edelman. There we go. Okay. So based on Kennedy, we're going to use the constant growth formula. And I've, I've shown the calculation here because I think it gets a little bit hairy to follow with Excel. But we need to take the, the $1.50, um, which would be the, the, the current dividend. Let's take a look at that in cell N48. Okay, now back on Part E, we calculated dividends per share by taking 600,000, the dividends divided by the 400,000 shares we're estimating to be uh, outstanding. Okay, so we already calculated the dividend per share is $1.50. All 
All right, so here we are back taking um, Kennedy's approach. D1 is the dollar fifty, and then we use the average. Um, this is hard to see. Let me slide off the screen so you can read that. Okay, I slid that a little bit, and I guess I got to slide a little bit more for you to see all of that. Okay, so what I'm taking is uh, the dividend for the current period plus one times one plus the average of the dividend growth and the earning pay, earnings per share growth to come up with the average growth rate, which they told us to use. And based on that, I get D1 coming to a dollar sixty-two. R minus G, we would take the Kennedy estimated required rate of return minus that same growth rate we just previously calculated, right? So that gives us the uh, denominator. And then we can solve for P hat zero, the current price, by taking D1, D sub one divided by R minus G. And when we do that, we get 21.49. Now we're slightly different from the published solutions, and I believe it's because of rounding, uh, no other reason. Okay, and we do the same thing for Strasburg, right? We take the dividend, um, and um, uh, at this point, I'm using the same uh, D1 pulled from above since we've already calculated it, R minus G. We now use the 12.54 times the average growth rate or the average of the compound annual growth rate we previously calculated for dividends and for earnings per share. And we come up with a $33.44 estimated uh, a price range based on Strasburg. Okay, now let's take a look at the last part of this problem. It says, at what price do you think Edelman's shares should be offered to the public? You'll want to select a price that will be low enough to induce investors to buy the stock, but not so low that it will rise sharply immediately after it is issued. Think about relative growth rates, return on equity, or ROEs, dividend yields, and total returns. All right, now let's talk about that a little bit. Okay, I think the potential range we come up with falls between that 2149 or 2154 if you use the published published solutions and the 3344 um, dollar range that we calculated. Oh, and I see I actually need to replace this. Okay, now I've put it in right there and I think uh, that looks you know a lot better. The 3366 or 33.44 is the high range. Okay, the data suggests that the price would be set towards the low end of the range, and the reasons for that is uh, Edelman has a high debt ratio, uh, which means added risk. Okay, Edelman is relatively small, and Edelman is new, and it won't be it, it won't be traded on an exchange. The actual price would be based on negotiations between the underwriter and Edelman, so we can't really determine the exact price. Um, but we would suggest that the price would probably be set near the floor um, and possibly even below the 2149 range or the 2154 uh, to let shareholders know that they're getting a value by, par by participating in this stock issuance. So, you know, possibly $20 could be a reasonable guess as to what price uh, the Edelman shares would sell for. And that concludes this problem. Thanks, everyone.